Good evening and welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers basketball tonight. The Lady Boxers welcome in the Taunton Tigers. Brockton with a record of 1-2 and two as they enter this game. The Taunton Tigers with a mirroring record at two wins, one loss. When we last saw Brockton here on... Brockton Community Access, they defeated the Mansfield Hornets with a buzzer beater coming in the final second of the game courtesy of Alicia Rosario. Brockton, having defeated Mansfield, has lost to Sandwich and Quincy this year, whereas Taunton, two and one, they have defeated St. Raphael's, Attleboro, and their one loss came courtesy of Falmouth. Four eight minute quarters played in high school basketball. Brockton starting five on the floor right now. Three-point attempt by McDuffie. No good. Rebound down low by the Lady Boxers. And it looks like they're going to step out of bounds. Starting five for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Number 33, Christian McDuffie. Number 32, or 34, Alicia Rosario. Number 24, Deanna, Diana Abraham. Number 23, Chantel Jordan. And number 11, Chanel Melton for the Taunton Tigers, starting five. Number 13, Kim Hickson. Number 21, Erica McGreevy. Number 25, Taylor Pelotti. Number 32, Gracie Harrigan. And number 42, Angie Martinez. Taunton draws first blood within a minute of the game. Nice layup, two zip, you score. Taunton on top, 7.15 to go. Jordan with the ball. Little contact made, out of bounds. That is off of Taunton. No foul, Brockton will inbound from the sidelines. Chantel Jordan, that one's actually going to go behind the backboard. Brockton still scoreless, 6.39 remaining here in the opening quarter. The Taunton Tigers with the lead, 2 to nothing is your score. You're watching Brockton Community Access. Peter Zimbor here calling the action solo courtside from Staff Gymnasium. Brockton Boxers coached by April Dingwell, first year as full-time head coach of the varsity squad. Taunton Tigers head coach is Walter Harrigan. Jordan with the ball, gets it over to Rosario. And with five seconds left in the shot clock, lays it up, no good. Gets her own rebound, puts it up again, no good. And fighting for a rebound once again off of her legs and out of bounds, it will be taught in ball. Six minutes, 18 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton over to Jordan. Jordan inside, try to get that to Abraham. She loses it upon a pass in the hands of the Taunton Tigers. Ball goes out of bounds off of Brockton. It'll be Taunton ball, 5.51 left to go in the first quarter. 2 nothing. still your score, Taunton on top. Gracie Harrigan with the ball, gets it over to Erica McGreevy, over to Harrigan. Harrigan inside to number 25, Taylor Pelote. Unable to accept the pass, it goes out of bounds. I believe that will be off of Brockton, and it will be Taunton Ball as Harrigan inbounds from underneath for the Tigers. Gets it into number 42, Angie Martinez. Martinez over to number 13, Kim Hickson. In the corner for three, no good. That was Harrigan, Brockton with the rebound. 
And we're going to have a travel called on Chanel Melton. And that will turn the ball over to Taunton. It looked like in midair she didn't realize she didn't have anyone to pass it to and had already put two hands on the ball and was going to come down and planted both feet and then began walking again. Can't do it. Two zip your score, Taunton on top. Five minutes, 25 seconds to go. Rosario puts it up and in. Brockton ties the game at two. Five minutes remaining in the opening quarter. And number 25 for Taunton retakes the lead for the Tigers. Taylor Pelote, 4-2 your score. Four minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Brockton stops and pops. That was Melt and no good rebound by the Taunton Tigers. Ultimately, it's Erica McGreevy bringing the ball down the floor. Melton tries to shoot from the outside, blocked by number 32, Gracie Harrigan for Taunton. Good defense exhibited by the Tigers. Melton with the ball once again, puts it off the glass and in. Brockton once again ties the game at four. Three minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the first quarter. 4-4 four, four is your score. Taunton down low, that is number 42, Angie Martinez. The Tigers doing a good job moving the ball right underneath the basket. Brocken coming down to the opposite end of the floor. Chanel Melton gets called for the travel. That turns the ball over to Taunton. We'll see some substitutions on the part of the Brocken boxes. Sharon Springsteed comes into the game as Alicia Rosario and Diana Abraham come out. Also coming in for Brocken is number 21, Dominique Coley. For three on the outside for Taunton is number 32, Harrigan. And Brockton unable to even inbound the ball successfully. Number 21, Eric McGreevy steals it, puts it in for two. And right now, Taunton has an 11-4 lead over Brockton. Boxers trying to come back. They have an uphill battle to climb. Good defense being played by Taunton. Brockton trying to keep the ball going as much as they can. We have a whistle, and that is going to be a foul called on Number 21 for the Taunton Tigers, Erica McGreevy. So two minutes and 52 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Brockton inbound the ball from the sidelines as the Taunton Tigers have an 11 to four lead. Travel called on Springsteed. Brockton really getting an exorbitant amount of travel calls in the early portion of this game. Taunton will inbound the ball from the sideline as they lead 11 to four. Just one team foul apiece for Brockton and Taunton respectively. Inside for the Tigers, nice defensive play by Coley for Brockton. The Tigers end up getting the rebound for three once again. That is Harrigan, no good boxers with the rebound.
Down low for Totten, that is number 25, Taylor Pelote. And with one minute, 50 seconds left to go in the first quarter, the Totten Tigers have a 13 to four lead over the Brock and Lady Boxers and head coach April Dingwell for the Lady Boxers elects to call a timeout as her team is trailing by nine with a buck 50 on the clock here in the first. You're watching Brockton Community Access Sports, Peter Zimbor calling the action. Solo courtside here tonight. The lone win amongst the Brockton Lady Boxers three games thus far this season was a thrilling victory against the Mansfield Hornets where Alicia Rosario hit a buzzer beater at the final second to give Brockton the edge by a narrow margin. Right now, not a narrow margin deficit form. 13 to four, your score, a buck 50 left to go in the first quarter. Brockton having to play catch up. Ton has been in control from the get go in this game. Brockton has been able to tie the game at up twice at two and four respectively. However, Brockton has not led at any point in this game. Chanel Melton will inbound the ball for the boxers as they have the ball. Rosario bring the ball up the floor, gets it over to Melton as she crosses half court. Over to Rosario. Rosario finds Coley, tries to get it inside of McDuffie, ends up in the hands of Springsteed. She just puts it up, no good, off the glass. And as Coley tried to rebound it for Brockton, it goes out of bounds, taught and ball. Taunton for three, and they've got the hot hand from the outside. Erica McGreevy now makes it a 12-point game, 16 to 14, or excuse me, 16 to four. Your score, Taunton on top. One minute nine seconds left to go, and Taunton will get the ball back as Melton tries to pass it to Rosario. Goes right through Rosario's hands, making some contact out of bounds off Brockton, and now the Taunton Tigers with the ball once again. Way out, Casey. Way out. Dangerous pass by Taunton, but. Succeeded for him, number three in the game now for Ton. She was fighting for the ball, that was Alicia Silva. Brock with the ball, Chanel Melton. <laughs> Traveling called on Rosario. I believe we have Four traveling calls on Brockton in the opening quarter. 36.4 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Totten with an opportunity to extend upon their lead before the buzzer sounds ending this period. Down low, off the glass and in. That is number 25, Pelote. 18 to four, you score Totten on top. 16 seconds to go, shot clock and game clock the same. Springsteed puts it up for Brockton. No good, Lady Boxes with the rebound, ends up in the hands of Chanel Melton, puts it up, no good. And the Taunton Tigers have the rebound, just four seconds to go. Can she get a shot off is the question, two seconds. And nice block by Dominique Coley as number 24 for Taunton, Sahara Khalil, try to get a shot off before the buzzer sounded, but to no avail. As we have reached the end of the first quarter, your score, Taunton 18, Brockton four, Brockton with a significant amount of catch up to play here in the second quarter. Taunton certainly in control. Once again, you're watching Brockton Community Access. Peter Zimbor, courtside calling the action. Staff Gymnasium, home of the Lady Boxers. The third Lady Boxers game out of the four they have played in which we have brought you on BCA thus far this season. And we look forward to bringing you many more as the season progresses. As you take a look at April Dingwell, head coach for the Lady Boxers, talking things over with her troops on the sidelines. She's assisted by her coaching staff, David Ray and Stephanie Savas. As we're now joined at the broadcast booth by Nubi Rateau as we enter the second quarter. Nubi, as we enter the second quarter, 
Brockton, at the very least, not in command of this game. And at the worst, really, looking a little bit tentative out there, I'd say. Well, Peter, the, the key is everyone knows what's going on right now. Brockton's having a tough time controlling the boards. Uh, way too many second chance opportunities for um, for, for Totten right now. Uh, this is time for Brock to box to go back to the fundamentals. It's really start boxing out. That's where it really starts for you to box out, limiting um, Totten to second chance opportunities. Um, number two, way too many turnovers on there, and they got to be more, more focused and stopping as careless in terms of turnover to basketball. Sharon Springsteen with the ball for Brockton. We have a whistle as we have contact made as number 24 for Taunton Sahar Khalil is called for the personal foul and Sharon Springsteed will shoot two at the free throw line as a result this is the first free throw shots of the game for either team Peter um I don't know if you remember this but I, I honestly think I'm making TV history by being the first person ever to go on camera in one quarter, and then switch to announcer in the second quarter. I think I'm the first person to ever do that. Oh, so we'll once again, the BCA. Folks the, we'll have to call up the folks at the Guinness Book of World Records. Maybe they can dedicate a page in that book to you. Yeah, I think they should dedicate a page in the book to me. And we have another foul called on the Taunton Tigers. So as Springsteed makes one of two from the free throw line, now we will be seeing number 30, Aliyah Brito shooting two at the free throw line as there was a foul called on number 32 for the Taunton Tigers, Gracie Harrigan. And Brito misses her first of two at the line. Again, Peter, another second chance opportunity for Totten right there. Brockton not being able to box out. Once the ball goes up in the air, you have to turn your back around, Peter, and box out and get that rebound. Brockton's had trouble throughout this whole game and, and allowing too many second chance opportunities. Right now, Peter, just seems like Tom's a little quicker to the basketball. It doesn't seem like that. Well, Tom for three. They've had the hot hand from the outside. This time it was Silva attempting a three-pointer. No good. If there's anything positive to say about the second quarter so far, it's that Brockton leads in the second quarter 1-0. Rebound by Taunton. Silva with the ball, looking down court, has a wide open number 24, Khalil, puts it off the glass, no good, Brockton now with the rebound, coming down the opposite end. Chanel Melton with the ball, over to Brito, into Coley, and that was an ill-advised pass right into the hands of the Taunton Tigers, and it is Alicia Silva with the ball right now for the Tigers, over to the side for three, air ball, but Tigers retain possession. Another three-point attempt, once again, no good, Brockton with the rebound, that's McDuffie. And Peter Brockton really has to work for every shot that they get right now. No easy shots. And another thing is, it's one and done. I mean, they're not getting second chance opportunities. You know, the, you know, the Brockton Bucks are definitely, you know, are not having the greatest day shooting on the field. And, you know, may, maybe this is the way to go. Attacking the basket and try to create some contact to get some, your points at the free throw line. Well, that personal foul by Gracie Harrigan for Ton, her second personal foul of the game, sends... Chantel Jordan to the free throw line. She hits her first of two as we see a plethora of substitutions come in for the Taunton Tigers. We'll get to those substitutions as those players work their way into the game. Second free throw attempt, no good. Brockton gets the rebound, puts it up, no good. Tigers with the rebound. It's number 42, Angie Martinez, who just checked into the game with the rebound. Silva still in the game. She has the ball, gets it over number 13, Kim Hickson. Back into the game. We have a foul called. That's going to be in Brockton, I believe, on Alicia Rosario. And it will be on Rosario, and Taunton will inbound from the sideline as a result. 
Five team fouls on Taunton today, just two on Brockton. 5.15 left to go in the half. Three point attempt by the Tigers. She sinks it, that's Gracie Harrigan. 21 to six, your score. Looks like a football score right now, Newbie. Now you gotta push, Peter. I mean, this is the time. You don't want it to get ugly right now. You have to stop the bleeding right now. Brock has to tighten up defensively. Jordan with the short jumper, no good. And that was a good, you know, that was a good offensive execution right there. Definitely had the shot, but Brock just, just can't connect offensively. McDuffie with the ball for Brockton. Bring the ball feverishly up the floor. Stops, thinks about it to the outside. Rosario thought about a three outside to McDuffie. Inside the perimeter, jumper, no good. Rebounded by Chanel Melton for the Lady Boxers. Got to fight right now. Got to fight. Shots are not working for you. Got to attack the basket. And turnovers like that, Peter, are not going to help out. But the Brock the Boxer is flat out cold from the perimeter. Some, some days you have it. Some days you don't. And those, those days that you don't have the shot from the perimeter, you got to attack the basket. And it's number 21, Erica McGreevy with the ball to Angie Martinez. Outside, Taunton will shoot a three again. No good, that was Hickson. They get their rebound from the outside for three. That is Gracie Harrigan, who is just lighting it up from the outside. 24-6, Taunton on top, just over four minutes to go in the first half. And Peter, it's looking like the, the Dartmouth game a few, uh, a few days ago, and Brockton really had a, a lopsided score. The road team is, is returning the favor here. Against the boxers. Boxers need to stop the bleeding right now. Down by 18 right now. Uh, with three minutes left, they really. The challenge is just some one, Peter. They're getting the shots. They're getting the perimeter shots and they're finding open shots, but number one, they're just flat out missing them. Number two, they're not getting second chance opportunities. Number three, if, the, if those two are not working, you need to go to the basket and create contact to go to the free throw line. At least try to get some points from there. Because obviously, the perimeter game is not working. They're just flat out cold today. Janelle Melton inside the paint for Brockton as they cut the deficit to 16 points, 24 to 8 your score. Taunton on top, 317 left to go in the half. Taunton moving the ball down low very efficiently, gets their rebound. Angie Martinez puts it off the glass and then 26 to 8. Plays like that, Peter, that's what separates winning from losing right there. You know, you got to hold on to the basketball. Just an another careless turnover which leads to an easy basket for, for the Tigers. Chanel Melton inside the paint. We're going to have a foul call to number 25 for Taunton. That will be Taylor Pelote. I like the aggression by Chanel Melton. The zone defense, Peter, pretty much dares you to shoot the three. Actually, they, 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 they allowed the perimeter. That Martinez. I apologize, but they allow the, the perimeter to be open when you play the zone defense. So it dares Brockton to shoot the three. It dares Brockton to shoot from the perimeter. This is where you got to be fundamentally disciplined and realize you got to go to the basket. Good thing about zone is the opposition playing his own defense, that back door is open a lot. So if you cut to the basket, someone cuts through the back door, often more times than not, it's an easy play, an easy basket. Twenty-six to nine is your score. Tigers in control. 2.37 left to go in the half as the Taunton Tigers work the ball around the perimeter. Eventually they'll take it inside, tries to lay it up. No good, Brockton with the rebound. It's Chanel Melton coming up with the basketball for the Lady Boxers. Over to Sharon Springsteed inside the perimeter. Outside to Melton from inside the perimeter. Shoots, that's good for two. One foot was inside the line. But Brockton does reach the double digit point. 26 to 11, your score Taunton on top. Should have been a jump ball right there, Peter. I don't know what they're calling. Strong Emily. In the game for the first time tonight for Taunton is number 11, Emily Richmond, and I believe she draws a foul off of Brockton. She'll be heading to the free throw line to shoot two. That foul is the third team foul for Brockton in the half, and it is called on number 21 for the Lady Boxers, Dominique Coley. So Richmond's first of two at the line, no good. Substitutions from Brockton and for 
Breton as we see Christian McDuffie come back into the game for Brockton as well as Diana Abraham, two of the starters. And for Taunt, I believe we see number 24, Sahar Khalil back into the game. Sharon Springsteed, she'll be fouled. And she'll now head to the free throw line. Eight team fouls on Taunt. It'll be a shooting foul nevertheless for Springsteen, though. This is what you want to see, Peter. You want to see the Brock the Boxers attacking the basket and, uh, and, and getting your free throw, uh, the points from the free throw line. Head coach Walter Harrigan for Taunt High School calls a timeout. His team has a 14 point advantage. 26 to 12 is your score. One minute and 49 seconds left to go in the half. And despite the Taunt head coach calling the timeout, newbie, you're April Dingwell, head coach for the Lady Boxers. Your team's trailing by a score of 26 to 12, less than a minute 50 to go. What do you say to your team right now? The good news is it's the second quarter. The bad news is it's down by 14 points. You want to finish, you don't, but you don't want to worry about that, Peter. You want to worry about the last two minutes of the ball of, of the first half right now. You always want to finish a half strong. You always want to finish a half strong and have momentum going into the following quarter. Brock and Boston treat this last two minutes like it's a two-minute ball game right now. Take over the ball game, play tough defensive basketball. How do you do that? Number one, they need to limit time to not have too many offensive boards and get and get these defensive boards because Tarn's having way too many second chance opportunities. Second chance opportunities for you to lead to easy baskets. Number one. Number two, Brock the Boston need to attack the basket. The fact of the matter is, Peter, they're cold from the perimeter. You gotta go to the basket, attack it. Get the points at the free throw line. Springsteed at the line makes it 26 to 13. So Brockton now down by 13 points. One minute, 42 seconds remaining in the first high. half. You ready to shoot? Ill-advised pass by Totten. Brockton with the ball to McDuffie. And McDuffie gets tripped up. We have a whistle. And McDuffie fouled at the opposite end of the floor, but because of the bonus situation, she'll head to the line, shoot one. And if she makes it, she'll get another. This foul called on number 25, excuse me, number 11 for Totten, that being Emily Richmond. The Brockton box can cut this down in single digits. It's a victory in the first half, Peter, as far as I'm concerned. Sharon Springsteed in the paint, no good. Richmond trying for the rebound for Totten. Out of bounds off Totten. Brockton ball. That should be Brockton ball, but they're going to give it to Totten. I thought it was off Richmond. That's interesting. No real protest from Brockton. So perhaps my eyes were deceiving me. McGreevy with the ball. One minute to go in the half. Totten for three. No good. Brockton with the rebound at Springsteed. She gets it over to Melton. Oh, Melton oh. nearly loses control of it, keeps oh. it in bounds, but into the hands of the Totten Tigers. And now, with just Springsteen to beat off the glass and in, that is number 24, Sahir Khalil. And once again, a 14 point lead for the Totten Tigers, 28 14. You gotta look up, Peter, if it's a fast break opportunity. That's probably one of the worst fast break opportunities I've seen in a while. You have to look up Chanel Welton was wide open in the last possession. You gotta look up to find the open person. Melton off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Khalil for Totten. Totten with one player down court all alone. Ball goes out of bounds off of Brockton. So Totten with the ball and a 14 point lead. 20.4 seconds left to go in the first half. Yeah, 
Springsteed for three. In and out. Final seconds ticking away in the first half. Got to put that up strong, Peter. Got to put it up strong. You're the perimeter right there. You're the tallest one on the court. You got to put it up strong. So the first half comes to a conclusion, and Brockton in the hole, 14 points, 28 to 14, your score. And Ton has been in control from the get-go. You're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor and Newby Rateau calling the action. We'll step aside for a quick breather. We'll have first half analysis and second half action when we return. You score at the half, Ton 28, Brockton 14. Stick with us. Lead paint poisoning affects over 1 million children today. Dust from lead-based paint could cause violent behavior. If your home was built before 1978, log on to leadfreekids.org. And we're back here at Staff Gymnasium as we enter the second half between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Taunton Tigers through the first half. Brockton trailing by 14 points, 28 to 14. And Newby, what, what can you make of the first half? Well, Pete, you know what? Uh, fact of the matter is, let's, let, let's not, you know, try to dissect, you know, what's going on here and then try to, you know, they're not shooting well. That's the fact of the matter is, it's not shooting well. They're getting the shots, it's just not going in. That's a fact of the matter. Brock the boss is not shooting well right now. And Taunton right now is getting way too many second chance opportunities. It is dominating the defensive boards. Flat out dominating. That's well, why they're down by 14, not by 12. First shooting opportunity of the second half. Chantel Jordan at the free throw line makes her first of two attempts as there was a foul called on Pelote for Taunton, allowing Jordan to head to the free throw line. Second attempt misses. <laughs> and Taunton gets the rebound. Tigers. Working the ball around the perimeter. Ultimately inside, back outside, but Alicia Rosario with the interception. She has the ball for Brockton. Number 21 for Ton, Erica McGreevy lays it up and in. 15 point lead for the Tigers, 30 to 15 is your score. Seven minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Brockton with a significant amount of catch up to do. Rosario for three, no good. Rebounded by Chanel Melton, she brings it back outside, back inside. I thought you could have called it for a carry, they allowed to let it go, rebounded by Ton. And Rosario with the steal for the Lady Boxers. Tries to get over to Chantel Jordan. Unable to inbounds. Brock was looking for a call, didn't get it. Three point attempt by McDuffie, no good. Taunton with the rebound. Three pointer by Gracie Harrigan for Taunton, who has been on fire in this game. And the Tigers lead 33 to 15 with 6.05 left to go in the third quarter. You know, if Brockton hasn't been getting the, the shots, newbie, Creasy Harrigan for Ton has been lights out, number 32. Absolutely lights out, Peter. Very impressive. I'm, I'm impressed with their composure, too. Just fantastic. Would you agree, Peter? I would. Thank you. She's got the ball once again, gets it over to. Erica McGreevy back to Harrigan. Harrigan working the ball up around the perimeter. Martinez with the ball. Back over to Harrigan. She'll shoot the three. Lights out. Like we said, lights out. And very composed. Just absolutely lights out. Just but she 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 plays like she's in this position before. That's my intention. My intention is to get the ball in the basket. So I shouldn't be surprised. 36 to 15. Taunton on top. Rosario for three for Brockton. Rosario now makes it. An 18-point game. 36 to 18, your score. 
Taunton on top. The most they've led in this game is by 21 points. Five minutes and 29 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And oddly enough, it is Walter Harrigan, head coach for the Taunton Tigers, who calls this timeout. See something he didn't like. Apparently, they're only up by 18. That's well, I mean, they didn't put a hand in her face when she shot the three. Um, but granted, I don't think Brockton should shoot threes for the remainder of the game because it just hasn't been working out for them. Um, you know, fortunately, they got that three right there, but it comes down to this. First of all, the Brockton defense side of the ball, they're not aggressive enough. They're giving the shooters way too much room to shoot the basketball. I mean, you put me and you on the court, Peter, and give me that much room, I'm making it in a few shots. Got tied up on the defensive side of the ball and get a hand in someone's face, number one. Number two on offense, you got to go to the basket. You got you to get in, you got to, you know, get there and get aggressive. You can't get cute. Go there, get aggressive, get a foul, go through free throw line, get your points. From inside the perimeter, that is Kim Hickson with a short jumper, 38 to 20, or 38 to 18, or rather you score a Totten on top. Chanel Melton with the basketball for Brockton, five minutes to go in the third period. Gets it to McDuffie. McDuffie inside the paint, puts it up, no good, rebounded by Totten. That is number 25, Pelote with a rebound, gets it over to number 21, McGreevy, bringing the ball down the floor in the corner. And we have a foul called on Rosario for Brockton. So Dominique Coley checking into the game for Brockton along with Aaliyah Brito as Diana Abraham and Christian McDuffie take a rest, 4.45 to go in the third quarter. Oh, for the love of Pete's sake, Peter. Oh, you're talking about leaving someone completely wide open, Peter. That's why they're down by 18 points, by 20, excuse me. She was completely wide open. Traveling called on Rockton, so Totten Ball. Three-point attempt. That almost went in. I was going to say, she didn't have a good look at it that time, Harrigan. Did not make it. 38-18 score remains, Taunton. Rosario inside the paint, no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Angie Martinez gets it over to McGreevy. Foot on the line, so that one's good for two. Kim Hickson, 40 to 18, 22 point edge Totten. Biggest lead of the game for the Tigers with three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Just four points scored by Brockton so far in the second half. Well, that's getting a little ugly, Peter. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that at one point they're, they're down by 12 in this quarter, and now, now they're down by 22, so um, ouch. Nice defense played by the Lady Boxers. Chantel Jordan underneath to Melton off the glass, no good, rebounded by Ton. Brockton unable to capitalize on the second chance opportunity and the Totten Tigers with the basketball once again. Last two minutes of the third quarter right now. Bronx Bucks have to put some type of stop to this bleeding, Peter. 
Well, we have a little break in the action, Peter. Just want to make some, a, a great announcement that um, uh, I'm very excited about. I learned some great news today that uh, my film, Silence, that um, many uh, uh, people are part of in the city of Brockton, has been accepted to the Queens International World Film Festival in New York in March. So um, I'm very thrilled that. Uh, well, congratulations on that, newbie. Oh, Peter, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to really take the stories of a lot of local people in this area for people can kind of see in the public eye. To, um, it's, real, it's a real feel-good documentary. Um, and I'm excited that the whole country is now going to see it. And we're first going to stop over in Queens, New York, the home of uh, Isaiah Jones and, uh, and, and, and the great boxer Born God. <laughs> I've got some friends in Queens, New York, and uh, I'm going to tell them to check it out as Christian McDuffie. Is at the line. Yes, Born God Washington from Queens, New York. Angie Martinez down low. No good for Tutton. Rebounded by McDuffie. McDuffie to Chantel. Jordan keeps it inbounds off the foot of number 21 for Taunton. Erica McGreevy. Brockton ball. Good job by Brockton of. Good job by Chantel Jordan of. Putting that ball off of a Don player to go out of bounds. You ever been to Queens, New York before? I have not been to Queens, New York before, so it'll be my first time. So I'm looking forward to a. Do you know what I think of when I think of Queens? You think of um, you think of the movie with Eddie Murphy. Coming um, to America. Yeah, coming yes. to America. Yeah. Everyone, that, that's pretty much <laughs> Queens is second to nature. Coming to America. I mean, that, that's, that's <laughs> the first thing I think of, honestly. Classic, classic. Probably my favorite Eddie Murphy movie. Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones, Samuel Jackson at the at the fast food restaurant, yes, yes, McDonald's, I believe. And many more announcements will be coming in the next few months or so. This is only uh, certainly not the first or last film festival I will be touring around the country so we will have those announcements and we'll be glad to uh, give them to you as they go on. I will find my queen in Queens as he puts his hand on the map. Three point attempt by Taunton, no good, rebounded by Brock and that is number 44 for Lady Boxers on the rebound, Catherine Lewis. Nice block by Harrigan. Composed even in great defensive plays, Newby. Reminds, reminds me of me, my prime, Peter. Back in my fifth grade YMCA days. Composed, cool, calm, controlled, calculated, confidence. One minute, three seconds left to go in the third quarter. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton to McDuffie for three. No good. Rebounded by Angie Martinez for Tun. And down low, all alone off the glass and not in. Misses two layups. That is Harrigan. Regroups, gives the ball over to number 25 for Tun. No good. Martinez with the rebound. And I think we're going to have a jump ball call, and we will. Three offensive rebounds, Peter. Three offensive rebounds. That's the story of the game. The domination of the Tigers on the boards. Just 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Totten with the ball. And off the glass, no good for the Tigers. McDuffie with the rebound for Brockton. Oh, wow, that's a great travel. 15 seconds to go. 
And we've got a whistle with 9.1 seconds remaining. That is going to be on number 24 for Brockton, Diana Abraham, and Totten will inbound from underneath. Brockton going to try to get a shot off before the end of the quarter. And the third quarter comes to a conclusion. And Brockton trails Totten by a score of 40 to 19. Just five points scored by Brockton in the third quarter. Brockton has only, the, the most they've scored in any quarter today was 10 points in the second quarter. So they are trailing significantly to the Totten Tigers right now. 21 point is the deficit. 40 to 19. Peter, here's what I can tell you. Tell me, newbie. Brockton's been dominating this game. Comes a time in your life when you got to say, you know what? You got me. Just, you got me. And, and Todd's definitely is the better team today. I think the tough thing today for the Brockton boxers is just the height factor where Todd is just just been more dominant in terms of the boards. I just think they're a more bigger team up front. Um, that's been a big problem for the Brockton Boxers, getting, getting the boards, because half of their points have been through second chance opportunities. Are you the type of guy that ever says you got me? Yes, I actually said that yesterday. In regards to what? I'd love to know. Long story. You still won't admit to everyone that Gilbert Gottfried is not Latino. Remember we had that battle a long time ago during soccer season? Yes, we did. I don't know how that's related really with this <laughs> game, though. You won't say you got me. We all said he's not, and you said he's got to be. But I'll still say Gilbert Goffey is You know, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Nice steal by Chantel Jordan. Gets it over to Rosario off the glass. Misses, but she'll draw a foul. She'll be going to the line to shoot two. And that's more of what we saw coming from Brockton since the tail end of the first half. They were driving to the hole and making the free throw line off. And just three team fouls apiece for each squad in the second half. 7-19 left to go in the fourth quarter. Where else is silence touring, newbie? Besides Queens in early March? Well, we will, we're going to make some announcements. Um, in a little bit, we're, we're, just, we're, we're in the process of hearing back from a few places. The only two of the places I can announce publicly is we are we we will be going to um, UMass Dartmouth, and we will be going to the University of Rhode Island. In terms of film festivals, I should hear back a lot more in the next two months or so. But. Um, We'll, we'll look to have at least about 10 premieres, either in the Massachusetts between colleges or film festivals around the country. So about 10. I only can announce three. Queens, UMass Dartmouth, and the University of Rhode Island. Timeout called by Ton as they lead 40 to 19, 652 left in the game. How big is the Queens Film Festival? Well, you know what? It's the third annual. Okay. Uh, Queens Film Festival. So, honestly, I don't know how big it is. Um, but, you know, definitely it's a larger market. Um, it's definitely bigger than the Roxbury Film Festival that we were at last year. Um, definitely expecting a lot more people. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to find out. But relatively speaking, it's a, it's a newer one, but it's definitely in a, in a larger market um, than Boston. So I'm expecting a good amount, good amount of people showing up. I'm excited. You don't know who you'll see in New York either. I don't have no idea. Spike Lee could show up. Spike Lee could show up. So we will see. And the good news, I'm, I don't really want to toot my own horn here, but I'm going to toot my own horn. Um, they were so impressed with the documentary, it was actually um, accepted early. Um, I'm supposed to hear back January 8th. I heard back before that. So 
Well, toot toot, newbie. Yeah, so I'm going to toot my horn about that. Can get back? Hit it. Having said that, though, um, you know, I just told I just told everyone else's story. Um, so it's really the stories that really made the film. All I simply did was 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 take the pen and write their story. So I can't take all the credit for that, and I will not take all the credit for that. So Chanel Melton will be heading to the free throw line for Brockton. Foul called on number 13, Kim Hickson for Taunton. 6.01 left to go in the game. Hey, out. Neither team has scored yet here in the fourth quarter, Newby. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point, Peter. Hey, box out. Let's go. I try to make only good points when I speak. Box out, box. Go. Oh, well, there goes that. Brockton cuts the deficit in half, 40 to 20 now. As Melton hits one of her free throw shots, 5.56, and the clock continuing to tick away, remaining in this game. Three-point attempt by Harrigan, no good. Rebound by Martinez, off the glass, no good. Taunton once again with the rebound. Harrigan puts it up, no good. Martinez with the rebound outside to Silva, no good. Plenty of second chance opportunities, third and fourth chance opportunities for Taunton on that last offensive possession but unable to score any points. Chanel, Chantel Jordan with the ball to Chanel Melton, to Rosario, she'll try from way outside, no good. Jump ball. So we have a timeout called by Brockton. I think after this time up here, we'll probably see a few of the um, other classmen um, play for the boxes, get a little experience. I'm actually interested to see uh, um, Jen Caruso play. She's a freshman on, on the um, varsity team. I actually remember her playing on the soccer team, varsity. So definitely a. She's a really good athlete. A good athlete. I mean, varsity on two sports as a freshman, that's definitely a. Uh, Saying something, so I'm actually curious on her skill um, at the varsity level for basketball. She definitely uh, played very well for soccer, and this girls' soccer team had a fantastic season. So four minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Taunton leads 40 to 20. You're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor and Nubi Rateau. Courtside calling the action. Nubi rocking his Air Jordans courtside today. Yeah, a little old school action, Peter. You know, I like to pay tribute to the greatest. Tomorrow I'll be wearing my Shaq sneakers. Do you have a pair of Shaqs, uh, Peter? I don't. Oh, they're probably sold out or something when you... The man who created the original design for Shaquille O'Neal sneakers, his daughter went to school with me at the Hancock School in Brockton. Yeah, I figured that. I didn't know Shaq still had his own line of sneakers. You know, Peter, um, other than Michael Jordan, the Shaq sneaker brand has been the longest running sneaker brand in sports history. I did not know that. So, I remember the Allen Iverson sneakers were hot for a while. They were hot, but Shaq has always been very consistent, you know, consistently, you know, consistently not high in terms of sneaker sales, but nevertheless, his sneakers have been selling 
Yeah, I didn't even know he had sneakers. Longer still. than, actually, you know what? Second to Michael Jordan, the longest. So, um, kudos to Shaquille O'Neal. We've had so many athletes who try to have sneakers, but Shaq has been consistent as other sneakers have gone out of business. The Kobe's and the Tracy McGrady's and the Steve Francis's. Shaq's sneakers have always been in business. Maybe not the highest, but they've always been in business. What in the world happened to Allen Iverson? Like, where is he? What is he He's doing right now? He's actually playing in Turkey, if I'm not mistaken. Is this career a little coulda, shoulda, woulda? No, his career is very solidified, Pete. He's a Hall of Famer. I mean. But did he ever reach his true potential? Oh, yeah, I think he definitely did. Really? Oh, yeah. Not even, I think he reached his true potential and more. The problem with Iverson was he never had teammates. I think Iverson is, is the um, basketball equivalent to Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders was always a great player, you know, who had a lot of numbers but never had the teammates. I think Iverson is, was... Perhaps Allen Iverson isn't seeing the same light more often than not because he attracted more negative attention to himself than Barry Sanders ever did. Barry Sanders never attracted any negative yeah, attention to himself. Yeah, but Iverson was, will go down as one of the best uh, two guards in NBA history. I mean, Iverson, second to Michael Jordan, is the only player in NBA history to bring a team to the finals without a legitimate center. Only player. You look at all, you look at, you go back to the 50s. It was always Russell, Chamberlain, you know, uh, uh, Baylor. I mean, Ewing, uh, Moses Malone, Jabbar, Tim Duncan. Akeem Olajuwon, they all had great big men or power forwards. Michael Jordan, even now with the you know, Celtics winning and, and, and so forth, and the Dallas Mavericks with Dirk Nowinski. The Philadelphia 76ers and Chicago Bulls with Iverson and Jordan are the only two players to bring their team to a championship without a dominant center. That's why he will go down. Top. So why four is Iverson five in, in Turkey now? Fact Eroded that, skills, yeah, money? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, well, he's too old. Too old to play in the NBA. His school's over the road. He's gotten slow. He's gotten beaten up physically in the NBA. Is he in financial peril? The fact of the matter is, Pete, he's gotten beaten up too much in the NBA where if you play European basketball where it's a little less physical, you can extend your career for a little longer and get some money on the side. But, I mean, I, I, I just, it's just impressive that if you look at the NBA in the past 50 years, it's always been dominated by a big man. All the champions have always had one dominant big man. Three pointer. Up until last year. Three pointer again by Harrigan. Here in the fourth quarter, Taunton is outscoring Brockton three points to one. It's been a very low scoring final frame here in the final stretch of this game. Remember when Allen Iverson crossed Michael Jordan as a rookie? Yeah, very overrated. I think I actually think Michael Jordan slipped. I don't think it was. I actually think he slipped. I don't think it was a cross. And Jen Caruso's in the game. The freshman for the boxes. So one minute, forty-three seconds left to go in the game. Forty-five to twenty is your score. Taunton on top over the Brockton Lady Boxers. Taunton has been in control from. The first quarter onward, and are certainly dominating here tonight against the Lady Boxers. Who else don't you hear from anymore from that era of NBA? Spud Webb, Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp and Spud Webb. Vinnie Spud Baker. Webb will always have the highlight reel of him winning the dunk contest. Remember Timmy Hardaway? Yes, I do. One of the best crossovers in NBA history. He's actually one of my favorite players. Remember Penny Hardaway? I remember Penny Hardaway. I don't like Penny Hardaway. You know why I don't like Penny Hardaway? He's an adversary of Shaq, probably, from the time in Orlando together. That's what I'm assuming. Yes, I do not like Penny Hardaway. I remember the great Glenn Rice. Won a championship with the Lakers and uh, was a great player with the Charlotte Hornets. Glenn Big Dog Robinson. I remember talking to Pablo Torre of Sports Illustrated who had just done a feature on Penny Hardaway and I said, did you ask him about Little Penny? And he said, I did actually. And Little Penny now resides on Penny Hardaway's couch. <laughs> McDuffie down low for Brockton, 45-22 Taunton on top. That was a very uh, 
very iconic ad campaign of the early 90s, Little Penny, along with Larry Johnson's Grandma Ma. Larry Johnson was one of my favorite players. You know, it's interesting to me that the Charlotte Hornets just went away because it seemed like they had a substantial fan base. I remember when they first came out, it seemed like everyone had Charlotte Hornets gear. Well, they had the best jerseys in the NBA. And those, pin, those pinstripe jerseys um, with the Alonzo Mourning on the team, LJ, uh, Derek Coleman was on that team. Shot clock violation on Ton. You know, I, rem I remember Robert Parrish playing for the Charlotte Hornets the final year of his career in the mid-90s. I remember Robert Parrish playing on the Chicago Bulls. He played it up until he was like 46. He went the most games in NBA history without scoring a point and then finally scored with the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> that's just a microcosm of, of this game, that turnover right there. Just um, having a real tough time just controlling um, – Controlling the basketball. Three pointer by Ton, that being number 53, Soraya Leon. 25 seconds to go in the game. 47 22 is your score. Ton on top. Final 10 seconds of the game. And an absolute wipeout here at Staff Gymnasium. As the buzzer sounds, the Taunton Tigers defeat the Lady Boxers 47 to 22. Newbie, final thoughts. Well, you know, Taunton was just a better team today. Completely dominated the Brockton boxes on the boards. Uh, Brockton was very cold from the perimeter. Brockton couldn't get second chance opportunities. Taunton got plenty of second chance opportunities. Uh, complete domination right here by the Taunton Tigers. I mean, we're not going to sugarcoat it. They're just a better team today. But having said that, good learning experience for the Brockton Boxes. Um, good learning experience to see, you know, what they need to do, uh, what type of uh, execution and, and so forth needs to be done in order to win the basketball game. Um, it's a work in progress, Peter. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, Taunton 47, Brockton 22, Brockton falls to 1-3, and three. Tottenham improves to 3-1. and one. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Nubi Rattel, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.